Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this lecture, we're going to be discussing heme synthesis. Uh, if you guys haven't watched our previous video about hemoglobin basics, I highly recommend you guys go watch it. It's located on our YouTube channel, YouTube forward slash Mad Medicine, in a heme uh, for step one playlist. And uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel because we're going to be posting new videos for you guys for step one every single day. Now, with that being said, this is going to be a relatively quick uh, uh, lecture that we're going to be discussing. So let's start. Now, uh, hemoglobin is a oxygen carrier protein found in the blood, and it's composed of four globin chains that are located in pairs and four heme molecules, which consist of proporphyrins and iron. And together, these two molecules, uh, these two substances are going to create heme. This right here is the chemical structure of protoporphyrin, okay? And uh, when you combine an iron with it, you're going to get heme. Hemoglobin is synthesized in the bone marrow, 80%, and also in the liver, slightly. Now, this right here is the structure of heme, and that is what we're going to be discussing today, the production of heme. As you can see, iron is located in the middle. It is bound to the protoporphyrin uh, to create heme. But hemoglobin, heme is located also on hemoglobin, and this is the molecular structure of hemoglobin. You have the globin chains right here, as well as four heme substrate groups uh, on the hemoglobin molecule. Today, like I said, we're only going to be discussing hemoglobin. So with that being said, let's begin our conversation and our discussion. This slide is going to be very, very important. You need to understand the steps that are uh, that that are taken to produce heme. Now, the first thing you need to understand is that hemoglobin is primarily produced in the mitochondria. Okay, it's primarily produced in the mitochondria because protoporphyrin and iron combine in the mitochondria. But heme, in general, the whole processes take place in the mitochondria and the cytoplasm. So don't get that mixed up, number one. Number two, there are two main substrates you need to produce to produce heme, excuse me, and without it, you're not going to have proper production of heme. That is going to be vitamin B6 and iron, okay? Without these two, you're not going to get proper production of heme. So let's break this down. Let's have a good discussion about how uh, a hemoglo or heme excuse me, is synthesized. It starts off in the mitochondria with glycine and succinyl-CoA. It's both of these molecules are going to be combined along with vitamin B6. That's why you need vitamin B6 because you need it for heme production. So vitamin B6 is going to help along with ALA synthase. ALA synthase is the enzyme that's going to combine glycine and succinyl-CoA to produce amino levolonic acid, aka ALA. So to synthesize ALA, you're going to use ALA synthase. Pretty straightforward. Now, amino levolonic acid or ALA is going to cross the mitochondrial membrane. It's going to go into cytoplasm, and when it does that, it's going to be converted by a molecule called ALA dehydrate. ALA dehydrate is going to convert convert ALA from ALA into porphobilogen. Okay, porphobilogen is made via ALA dehydrate. Porphobilogen is then going to be uh, uh, is then going to be converted into hydroxymethylbilane via porphobilogen deaminase. Okay, and then through a series of steps, you're going to end up at uroporphyrinogen two. Uroporphyrinogen two is going to be converted to coporphyrinogen three via the use of uroporphyrinogen decarboxylase. And then finally, this copor co excuse me, this coproporphyrinogen 3, that's a mouthful, this molecule is going to be transported across back across the mitochondrial membrane into the mitochondria and it's going to become por uh, protoporphyrin and protoporphyrin is then going to combine with heme via the use of ferroketolase. Ferroketolase makes sense because it's a uh, iron molecule, so ferro stands for iron, right? And it just uh, binds it, ketolases it to uh, the heme, or sorry, to the protoporphyrin molecule to create heme. Now, in each of these steps, each of these enzymes correspond to a pathologic state that you need to know. Number one, if you have a breakdown of the first, uh, the first enzyme, ALA synthase, you're going to deal with sideroblastic anemia, okay? This is because of vitamin B6 also, right? So vitamin B6 is needed for this uh, production of ALA. So if you decrease ALA, you're going to deal with sideroblastic anemia. Now B, if ALA does not become porphobilinogen, 
it's going to lead to, it's going to be caused by lead poisoning. Lead poisoning is going to block ALA, or it's going to block, sorry, ALA dehydrate. So let's put that here. This is this. So lead poisoning, when you have too much lead in your body, you're going to block the function of ALA dehydrate. That means you're going to have high levels of ALA in your body when it comes to uh, lead poisoning. Then in the next two steps in the cytoplasm, that is where porphyrias usually occur. Porphyrias are diseases that are associated with uh, improper or immature production of heme specifically or of, or actually specifically protoporphyrin. And the two main types that we're going to be talking about in this uh, in this in the next upcoming videos are going to be acute intermittent porphyria and porphyria cutanea tarda. These are going to happen with the uh, improper use or the improper function of these two enzymes right here, enzyme three and four, uh, porphobilinogen deaminase and uroporphyrinogen decarboxylase. So if these two enzymes don't function, you're going to get the porphyrias that we're going to talk about in the next upcoming lectures. And then finally, lead poisoning. Lead poisoning is going to prevent the production of heme via blocking ferroketolase. So ferroketolase gets blocked from lead also. So this is also going to lead to an increase in protoporphyrins. So just to recap, heme is produced via the combination of iron and por protoporphyrin uh, through the use of ferroketolase. Okay, heme is produced in the mitochondria mainly, but it also uh, the precursors for heme also are located in the cytoplasm. That's where a lot of those uh, uh, enzymatic uh, interactions are happening. If you block any of these enzymes, you're going to get several diseases, like we talked about right here. And then the other thing to remember is that vitamin B6 and iron are very important for heme production. And with that being said, that's pretty much all you need to know about heme production in this video. I highly, highly recommend you guys go through, work through, and write down all of these steps so you guys can memorize this pathway. It's pretty important because you can be tested on what happens if this enzyme is blocked. Okay. Not only are they going to ask you about the disease, but they'll ask you which uh, molecule is going to be uh, increased in the amount in the body, right? So if you're blocking, let's say if you are blocking uh, porphyrinogen, porphyr, porphyrinogen deaminase, this molecule right here, what's going to happen? Well, you're going to have an increased amount in porphyrinogen, right? That makes sense because the porphyrinogen can't move forward. So those types of questions can also be asked along with what can happen with lead poisoning uh, as well as what does lead, lead block, okay? What enzyme does lead prevent from functioning properly? So with that being said, again, spend some time with this. Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. You can also find us on social media with these uh, two handles. So go to our Instagram and our Twitter. And if you don't know, you can find our lectures on our, your favorite podcast service for free. Just search Mad Medicine and we'll pop up.